So it's one of the most versatile lures on the market, whether it's trout, barra, brim, flathead, trevally, mangrove jack, it catches all of them. Today we're talking about the Daiwa double clutch and I'm gonna talk about this exact spot and show you on a map where I upgraded my entire bag in a tournament. There's also a giveaway, so let's get into it. So it's episode eight of eight of the Lure Challenge pack series and I am pumped to round the series out. I've done a lot of learning over the last few episodes and particularly with you guys coming along uh, on the ride. Out of all the comments that have been written on the last seven episodes, the lure that keeps coming up, whether it's your favorite lure or hard body or jerk bait, is the dial or double clutch. So it's a little bit fitting that I guess we finish on the lure. I will take a quick segue there and say your engagement, comments, likes, discussion and, and messages to me about the channel and how it's gone have been really flattering and overwhelming. So thank you for that. Particularly as we go into 2021, we've got some big plans and the lures and the gear reviews still do continue to come and I'm really pumped to present those to you. So, so it's probably a good segue as well. So a big thank you to the people and the companies that are getting behind the lure challenge packs as well. It's really awesome to hear when someone wants to offer something to you guys, particularly like a giveaway form. But I really like the idea that the audience gets something back. So again, Burley Pro are into the video and are offering a giveaway. We'll get into that, some of those details in a minute. But in this video, we are getting into the Daiwa Double Clutch. Now we're gonna talk about the lure size and the color that's been presented to us in the pack. I'm gonna talk about some of the specs and a couple of cool little features of the lure that sort of set it apart as a jerk bait, but there's a reason that this lure is a bit of a staple across all fishermen in Australia. And like I alluded to at the start, I'm gonna go through a tournament scenario that I found myself in, and I'm gonna show you on a map the exact spot and how I used this lure to upgrade my bag, my entire bag in the space of five or maybe six casts or so. The great thing about the scenario is that you can take the flat and the area that I'm gonna talk about and apply it to your local waterway. And I've got no doubt that that should get you on a fish or at least point you in the right direction. So it's a pretty kind of nice, exciting scenario there. As always, before we get into the meat, here's some shots of the lures in action. So the lure pack has graced us with the Daiwa double clutch in the 75. Now, uh, the color is Kawamutu, I think it's pronounced, I cannot pronounce this name, but it's written down there. We look at it, it looks silver. It's got the, a black line across the center and a pattern across the top as well. It looks purely as a bait fish, but when you look closer, uh, and I'll hold it up here against this uh, light that's behind the camera, I can see through it. It's really easy to see through in a high light scenario. Um, tells you there's a little bit of a blue in there as well. So that silver, whilst it appears mirrory, it is actually translucent to some extent. At the top of the video, I talked about all the different species that the double clutch did catch, and there are a quick Google search way. You'll be able to find mangrove jack and a bunch of different fish that have been caught on it. I think there's some videos of, of double clutches catching trevally on YouTube as well. So go have a look at that if that interests you. Now there's two real reasons why I think the double clutch is a really successful and popular lure. The first in terms of popularity because anglers get a really good amount of feedback with the lure. It works, its action is quite violent in the vibration sense. It doesn't have a, a ball bearing in it at all to create rattle, but the vibration is bloody wicked to relate it at all. It's probably like throwing your hand on a clothes dryer 
uh, whilst it's on with the amount of vibration that you get through the rod or on the clothes dryer. It's really easy for an angler to know and get that feedback that that lure is working for them. The second, and I kind of mentioned it already, is that the lure is silent. So on one side it offers this potential to be this giant, chaotic, attention-seeking lure, whilst on the other, a really nice, finesse, silent, little bit of vibration only lure, really has a large spectrum of applications. And I'm gonna talk about a couple of applications in a sec. In the case of Flathead though, we know that they don't tend to sniff or taste or be tentative on their food. Once they've made the decision that that thing is to be eaten, they go after it. So this lure moving through the water column, making a lot of chaotic movement, giving a visible shine as it moves around in the light is a real no brainer for those fish they will just go after it and smack it every single time. So the lure retails for about 25, 26 bucks. And I guess the last thing I'll talk about the lure as we zoom in here is this internal weight system. I think they call it the S-GOS. Now, you know, there's some words I'll write up about what they actually mean, but, but in normal terms, it basically means that there's a inbuilt weight inside that's running on a guide and that weight moves rearward and forward depending on where it's needed for the stage of lure application. In a cast, it'll fly to the rear of the lure and the lure will go tail first. Um, if you remember Science 101 and physics and stability, if the weight is at the front of the lure as it's moving through a medium, in this case air, uh, it will be more stable and there'll be less rolling and less tumbling. And if that's occurring, well then it's gonna go further in terms of its cast stability. The cool thing about it is that when that lure lands and you start pulling it, that weight then travels from the rear to the front again. And as you work it, it keeps the nose down the way it should be and, and the center of gravity and center of pressure exactly where the lure needs to be. Pretty cool. I like little gadgets like that in lures. I reckon they're sweet. Keep one foot on the sky. Right, so the comp to finish off both the series and the video. Burley Pro are getting behind the video and are offering 10 Daiwa double clutches, sizes and colors of your choosing. If you are up north, go for the barrel ones or mangrove jack sizes or whatever you want. If you're down south, go for whatever color that you like. You know, smaller ones for trout, for example. Colors are up to you, sizes are up to you. All you need to do to enter is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below on which of these episodes during the Lure Challenge series have been your favorite. I really get a good kick out of hearing your feedback and listening to what you actually liked and you didn't like, so please write your comment below and you'll be in the running to get 10 of these bad boys, colors and sizes of your choosing. I'll draw it on this date. Let's get back to the video. So where would I throw the Double Clutch 75? Well, this guy already lives in my tackle box because it offers a deeper diver solution to my water column issues that I might have if I can't find fish up on the shallow. So with that in mind, I'm gonna draw some graphics here for you. The first place I'd be looking for is the drop-offs and not the smaller ones either. Here I like the 75 on the stuff that's, you know, two to three foot drop-off down to 10 foot plus. The lure itself dives to you know five to six feet, so it makes it suitable for fish that are cruising up and down a rock wall or a steep bank or an edge with maybe some weed beds on them. It's perfect to uh, you know bang into those concrete rocks or those black boulders that you might get on a break wall. The second area I like to use it, and it's probably the one that I've had more success with the 75 size, is using it in ultra shallow. Now you typically wouldn't expect it but it seems to have worked really well for me so areas that are under a meter under three foot and i throw this guy out and then just drag it and smash it into the bottom of the flat generally whether it's sand mud or silt that large bib that's on it will just create a giant amount of commotion 
the bib is pointed so it almost like it's it's a shovel and it's meant to dig into the sand what that'll do is, is it moves along as a create a puff of sand and obscurity and a cloud behind the lure that attracts fish things go oh geez what's digging up over there as soon as you stop the lure and that cloud starts to disappear and all the fish are looking at it then you have this bait thing just sitting there crying eat me and i really like the double clutch in that application so this is the spot on the tournament that i'm going to talk you through and tell you about yes i don't care go straight to bem river go straight to the spot fish it i really hope that you get some fish if you can't do that, well then apply the techniques that I'm gonna to talk to you about here. And I reckon it's a really nice way to cover some serious water and get your lure in different places in the water column. So as I draw the flat, it looks like this. And on the final day of the competition in particular, you know, the wind was from behind me. And I guess that's the best direction in this scenario. As the boat approached the bank, I used the first technique that I talk about to work the drop off edges. So the first, cast was a short cast to the right and then a couple of long casts to the left to work down the bank here. Really I was rolling and twitching and pausing and looking for fish that were cruising up and down that area. There's a weedy drop off area but as the wind pushes against it the water churns and a lot of stuff gets beaten up on that edge there so bait will find its way there, broom will run up and down the edge of that bank. On this occasion though, I didn't really get any fish doing that. So I allowed the kayak to drift and I will drift onto the bank. I'll power pole just before it, but uh, I'm basically going to sit the kayak right on the depth change about here. With the wind behind me and that weight system I talked about as well, the lure will go really, really far. But the trick for me here is to try and find a longer cast. So if I can get a long retrieve in of just pure sand, well that's always going to be a little bit nicer. But I also do want to get close to the weed because in the weed is generally where the fish are hiding anyway. So there's a nice little compromise. I want to get close to the weed but I don't want to be on the weed. If I'm on the weed the lure will foul up and then I'll have to drag this lure 15-20 meters over some really nice area. So once I pick a line and I get the lure into the water I'll look to dive that lure straight into the sand and give it about five cranks get it really into there, get it working and creating a divot if you like, a lot of chaos, a lot of action, a lot of underwater movement. And then I'll look at the stop and pause. From there, I might give it a twitch twitch and wait again. And then I'll go again, another five or six cranks, make a giant amount of commotion, pull it to a new piece of weed or a new spot and then stop it again twitch twitch and it's about there that I typically get the fish after that twitch. In my experience the windier the better. It's just one of those lures that in my experience is better with wind. If it's white capping that is awesome. Often in the kayak tournament at Bem River you'll see guys collapse back to this flat about an hour early and start really working those weed patches as well. They all know that there are fish there at the right time of the year with the right wind. That flat is going nuts and insane. I'd recommend you have a bit of go at it yourself. <music> to cap off, look, the lure has been a staple in my uh, tackle box for a number of years now. The double clutch is a bloody brilliant lure at it's finesse presentation and if you really want that violent application, again, really highly effective in shallow water and working those deeper drop-offs because the lure does get deeper than your standard cranks. The lure does offer a lot of vibration so you get that chaotic response but also slow it down, make it subtle and you'll also present it really nicely for the finesse days, for the days where there's not a lot of wind and the bites are a little bit more difficult to get. So this is me closing out the little challenge episodes. Remember the comp that's in the comments there. Enjoy your time, stay safe, I'll see you next time.